So today we're going back to the pilot episode of Suits. In this clip, we're gonna see some examples of things not to do. And as we look at them, I'll tell you why it's not a best practice and what to do instead. Jessica, have I come in a bad time? Gerald, this is Harvey Specter. He's our best closer. That's right, I don't want him around. He wouldn't be around. It's an honorary position. I don't give a shit. Well, I think you do, because that's what's changed since I left, which means it's you who's been dealing in bad faith. Well, now that you've got a grasp on what's happening, the goddamn... So let's just stop here. Saying that someone is acting in bad faith. I mean, it creates really nice drama, and usually does not increase the likelihood that the person accused of bad faith is suddenly gonna back down. I mean, imagine you've been accused of acting in bad faith. What do you typically do? Uh, do you crumple up and, you know, say, oh my gosh, I'm guilty? Even if you feel that, almost always you defend. So, not a good start for sure. Interim. What are you going to do about it? Because he's not getting that title. Well, let me make sure I understand this, okay? We negotiate... Okay, let me just stop there. So, Spectre says he's not getting that title. This is a golden moment for a good negotiator to say, say more about that. What's the concern with him getting the title? But instead, what we already start to see, and we'll see a little bit more, is instead of asking a curious question, there's a retort back. Point, counterpoint, point, counterpoint. Listening, not involved. And that's always a mistake in a negotiation. Whenever I'm in a negotiation, and someone brings something up to me that I disagree with, don't want to say yes to, thinks is wrong-headed. Instead of defending or retorting, I always want to just say, so it sounds like this is important to you. It sounds like withholding an honorary presidential title is important to you. Why? Say more about that. And what I'm doing there is helping us move from the position, no title, to the underlying interests. But let's see what actually happens. Negotiated a deal that gave you everything you wanted. Mr. Cooper signed it. And now you won't close until we take away the last shred of his dignity? Bingo. Well, that's not going to happen. And why the hell not? Okay, so let's just stop there. I mean, to the credit, I guess, of Harvey Specter, he admits that his interest is in removing someone's dignity. But from a yesable proposition, right, that almost always is impossible. If you think about core human interests, things that don't get equated to dollars and cents, retaining one's dignity is almost always core, crucial, and non-negotiable. Now, for somebody who wants to take someone else's dignity away, one of the things you want to be looking for there is what we call translations. That desire to take someone's dignity away is almost always coming from some set of emotions that aren't being acknowledged or named. Maybe you've been humiliated before. Maybe you're embarrassed. Maybe there's a side of you that feels somehow taken advantage of. That translation turns into a position of humiliate the other person or take their dignity away. So a really good negotiator is hearing that somewhat impossible position of take dignity away and translates that back into an emotion. But again, let's see what actually happens here. Because I like Mr. Cooper, and my firm doesn't operate in bad faith. Oh, I see how it is. Instead of working Cooper, you're working me. Well, why don't you take your pansy attitude back in there and make him sign my deal? Or I'll pay someone else your money to do it for me. Well, first of all, Gerald, if you think anyone's going to touch... Sorry, I just love that moment, because... What we really see here, right, is two grown-ass men acting like third graders on a playground field, escalating this up, right? And then we get this clip of this senior partner in the firm, who's a woman, just looking at them, and you could almost read her internal voice, like, this is the art of the deal? This is sad and embarrassing. And yet, sadly... Many negotiations actually play out this way, and I would just say 
regrettably, in this kind of political and polarized moment in our country, we see more and more of this really boyish behavior occurring on the national stage, in our politics, on our debate stages. And um, it is not state-of-the-art. It's not based on research. And it's kind of sad, even if it makes for pretty good TV. This deal after your bad faith, you're mistaken. Second, the way our agreement works is the minute Cooper signed the deal, which gave you everything you wanted, our fee was due and payable, which is why. I just want to make a really quick pause here, not on what's said, but on what's seen. Um, the use of the physical space here, right? The decision to stride across an office and then sit down cavalierly in the chair is a sense of I control this space and you are very much the visitor. So it is a nonverbal way of continuing to play this kind of macho headbanger approach to negotiation. At 7.30, I received confirmation of a wire transfer from escrow indicating payment in full. So I'd say the ball's in your court, but the truth is your balls are in my fist. Now, I apologize if that image is too pansy for you, but I'm comfortable enough with my manhood to put it out there. Now get your ass in there and close the goddamn deal. So I think what we see continuing here, right, is now an additional use of a threat, which is a signed document, uh, with continued insults. And now the insults really have become blatantly and openly uh, uh, kind of personal uh, to each other. Um, now, this negotiation move actually ends up working in this case. And one of the things I would just say is that negotiation moves sometimes where you're using threats and you're using leverage can actually often work in the short term. But they have really high costs because in this case, we have two prominent, wealthy, and powerful business people. And in the clip we're seeing here in round one, there's a winner and there's a loser. But there's always round two and round three and round four. And you could be darn sure that the loser here is gonna be working really hard to get leverage to change the game down the road. The best practice in negotiation is instead of escalating, to actually try to understand what really matters to both sides here and how can we jointly find some way to work through this problem so that both of our dignity is respected and honored in a way that once we close this round, we can actually work with each other in the next round. Or even if we don't like each other, even if there's a divorce or a separation, that there's a way we can leave and not be trying to wreck each other going forward. So I'm really curious to hear your own stories of times when you have felt threatened, maybe with a legal document or a deadline, um, and how you reacted and really what you thought would have been more effective. So drop those into the comments. And before you leave, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and ring the bell so you never miss new videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Bob Bourdon with the Cambridge Negotiation Institute. Okay, it's not difficult to keep watching. Click, click. <laughs>